Hey y'all, it is Jocelyn Elise, That Mindset Teacher, and welcome back to my channel. If you have been rock, rock, rocking with me, then you already know that we are really focusing in on Google Slides. Y'all, this has been a summer project of mine and just something that I have been working on to make sure that I can do. Like right now while I have time over the summer, I'm really thinking about things that I can do to strengthen and maximize student growth inside of my classroom. And one thing that I stand by as an educator is explicitly teaching these standards. So I have been using a technology tool. Y'all make sure we are um sitting where we're not just using technology tools or we're not just having technology in the classroom but we are actually utilizing those tools and integrating them into our instruction to maximize learning right so i've been using google slides um and really thinking about how i can use google slides to create these slides that explicitly teach my standards and that help to map out that learning for my scholars so today we are going to go ahead and create a anchor chart that is focused on um making connections through a text all right y'all so as we mentioned we are talking about um, making connections between a text that's rl 4.7 and i do go ahead and just look at what's out there um the thing about this standard that really sticks out to me is making connections between the text and a visual or oral presentation. So I want my kids to really focus on connecting what's in the text to what is going on, like the pictures, the illustrations, the things like that that connect to the text. I feel like a really great way to do this is to use graphic novels. One graphic novel that like many of my kids are into is Dogman. So using a text that they're familiar with to go ahead and teach the standard will be extremely powerful. Powerful. Now what I'm doing is using my snipping tool. Um, if you have a Windows computer, there's a shortcut. You can use the Windows key, Shift and S, and it's literally just gonna go ahead and a screenshot um, whatever is on your screen. So I am going ahead and taking a screenshot of that Dogman um, comic that we just found on the internet. Now what I don't like is that big space in between. I wanna maximize the space on the slide and make sure I have enough space to really kinda give my students some information um, as well. So I'm just gonna copy that and then um, crop it so that the space is not there. Once I have done that, I'm gonna go ahead and open up a blank uh, PowerPoint presentation. I do not like creating my slides in PowerPoint, but I do like that PowerPoint allows us to integrate um, different fonts into PowerPoint. So what I like to do, because I have specific fonts that I use, they're actually the fonts that I use for my classroom decor. And so all of my slides typically match my classroom um, decorations, right? So all of the fonts around my room are pretty consistent and they line up with the fonts that I have inside of my classroom. So what I go ahead and do is I'll type whatever I want in that specific font and then I just copy and paste it into the Google slide. And usually I only do this for like my headers and stuff like that. Um, and I'll go ahead and just type the other things that I'm putting or the body of my slides on in Google Classroom. Um, and not Google Classroom, y'all, Google Slides. So right now I'm just writing out really what standard, what kids should do based off of the standards. Um, and I said, readers make connections between a text or drama and visual or oral presentations of the text. So they're making a connection between the text or the drama with the visual or oral presentations of it, right? Now, one thing that I'm noticing is that I could really get to the point with this one um, side of the graphic novel. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut the other one out because again, we're talking about maximizing space and making sure that we are utilizing the space on the slide intentionally and getting to the point for students. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut that other slide off and then I'm gonna add in a shape, a arrow, um, to kind of point downward to this box where I'm gonna give students just a little information about how we can use illustrations to help us understand what's happening in a text. And so in this particular part, we see like the police officer is calling Dogman and Dogman is a little busy uh, ruining the mayor's flowers. And we see this in the illustration. We don't actually see words that tell us that. And then um, 
we see him running to go answer the call. Then we see once he gets there that they're a little surprised, like they're taken aback. Um, so this kind of just helps us to see the things that um, the writer hasn't necessarily wrote inside of the text. That's why I like comic books for this particular standard, because it really highlights the things that are not in the um, text and how we can use visual representations to help us to see now i'm gonna go to epic and i'm gonna pull a just a screenshot of a read to me book i'm gonna do that same thing that i did before where i take the screenshot i am doing a read to me book because when kids see that they automatically know that the um book is going to be read to them is going to have some audio that's playing with the book so them seeing that logo is going to help them to make the connection because they do um use epic within the classroom and they know what that read to me sign means right so i'm gonna go ahead and put this to help me to talk about the oral uh presentations of a text because this is a form this is a, a form oral of a oral presentation now we're just gonna go ahead and copy and paste that arrow in that box that we have next to the other one. Um, that's And we're gonna write a statement that's kind of similar, um, talking about how we can use audio, such as um, the tone of voice and the sound effects that are included in the audios. And students know this because when they're listening to those Read To Me books in Epic, they can hear like the spooky music in the background or they can hear the ball, um, you know dribbling or they can hear a crash when someone has supposedly fallen in the text so this will help them to make those connections as well so now i am going ahead and searching up the one and only ivan movie i'm doing this because we've already read the book and watched the movie um together as a class so they've had some experience working the standard just a little bit um as we were doing that where they really make connections between things that happened in the movie things that happened in the book details that weren't in the movie and the book and they were able to compare and even see how the movie added and similarities and differences and things like that um so i am going ahead and and I just copy and pasted a picture of the book, the movie um, inside of a computer screen. I thought that looked really good. So then they could see that we're talking about a movie or a video of some sort. And I just said we can use videos and movies to contribute to the meaning of a text okay so this is again just reaffirming that in students that we can use these things to help us to um create a deeper understanding and to even add or take away things as we are um comparing and making connections between things now i'm just looking at my wording and thinking about um how i've kind of said these things and making sure that it makes sense and aligns with the standards i love keeping my standard over there on the side so that way i can make sure um that what i am doing is really addressing what it is that my students need to know and meeting state expectations so now that I feel pretty confident about this slide, I'm going to go ahead and duplicate it. And I'm actually going to create another um, slide that addresses some other parts of the standard. Well, not really some other parts, but just gives a little more um, detail and clarification in what it is that we're talking about. So when we're thinking about this particular standard, it's really talking about the different types of media and how they can add to a text. So what I'm going ahead and doing is kind of creating a chart that shows the different types of media and just the advantages and how they can help us to better understand what's going on with the text. I tell my kids all the time, the goal and the reasoning for reading and for using these tools is to gain a better understanding so um, we're really thinking about how can this help us to understand now that I made that little table I'm going ahead and just adding um, a visual element that goes with each of these so audio so they know that audio is um, you know what they hear I put the little microphone and I did to do this you guys I just want to insert and then I clicked um, images and search web so now I'm just searching for some children books images that I can go ahead and add next to illustrations. I did not like what they had inside of Google Slides, so I did go ahead and um, just do a Google search and copy and paste that image um, uh, into my slide. I know that that book is something that my kids are familiar with. 
Then for the TV screen, we are going ahead and doing the same process that we did for the little microphone. So I just typed in a TV screen clip art after I clicked insert image and then um, search web. And I'm just going to go ahead and use this little black and white TV. Uh, the kids don't know nothing about that, but it's really showing how um, that I'm talking about a video. So something like you would watch on the TV or something like that. Now I'm going to go ahead and add in just a little bit of text that describes the advantages um, each of these different types of media have for my kids. I feel like it's very important to go ahead and highlight to them. Like when you are looking at an audio, let's go ahead and look at these certain things. Um, so that we can make sure that we are best utilizing the parts of the text. The parts of the text are not just there for us to see and to notice and to like kind of skim over, but those parts really help us to gain a deeper understanding of the text as we are reading. So I have went ahead and typed in um, the different advantages inside of my table. And what I am going to do is um, change this font to be just a tad bit bigger to fill in the space of the box. And I am also going to change the font to Comforter. That's my favorite font in Google Slides. And now we are all done. Here is the finished product. All right, y'all, I hope that you really enjoyed this video. I hope that you were able to take something from it. I hope that it was useful to you and that there are some things from this video that you can take and apply to your instruction. As always, if you have any questions, please, please, please do not hesitate to reach out to me. Um, you can comment below. Uh, you can just hit me up and we can go ahead and try to work through those things together. If you enjoyed this video, like it, comment, and subscribe.